This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back and we have another fun week and all kinds of stuff is still coming out. Um, see how the summer is going to go. Uh, I was going to do some stuff this weekend and that kind of fell through. Uh, my mom was going to be in town, but that's not going to work with all the new restrictions and things on travel. Um, hope everybody else is having an enjoyable summer. I know a lot of people went back to school. Hope all that's going well. There was like a rat infestation uh, in a nearby school that kept them from uh, having their day so that they have to delay it another week or two. Hope nobody else has to deal with that. But that's pretty crazy, right? You walk inside and like, we're here for class, but it's all rodents. Yeah. Let's see what's going on in board games. We're going to go to Star Wars at the beginning of this. This is uh, 3D terrain for Star Wars Armada. Um, they're STLs, or you can get them magnetized, depending on which version you want. You can get them painted. All that kind of fun stuff. I'm not sure if uh, this is licensed at all. Um, but sure, why not? It's a first uh, round company that's coming through. If you get the STLs yourself, then uh, you're pretty much guaranteed uh, you know, to be able to at least print uh, when they send you the STLs. No problem. Asteroids and everything look all right. Um, how the cutting of the magnets would work. I don't know if you just get neodymium ones and you uh, take a, I don't know, a uh, bit of super glue and a drill bit and make yourself a little cavity in each one. Maybe that's how that works. So that's cool. Uh, oh, and it's also on my mini factory. So maybe that's how they're going to be doing it from there. Uh, and offering also the ability to print it from my mini factory not just uh, have even your own printer. So lots of different options are available. Uh, it's hard to say with the licensing on some stuff, like who the people are that are able to get it. Uh, this is a 2019 board game publisher. Uh, I don't know. So they haven't been around long, but maybe they got the license. And otherwise, you know, you can play around and make your own Star Wars stuff, even if you don't play the game. And we've got another popular genre. This is for Vikings in Yarn. And it is a tactical card game, two to four players. It's got the runes and other things on there on the different cards. It says it would take 20 minutes, so maybe you can play it at a lunch break. Um, Kickstarter exclusive, so don't expect it in stores. It looks like it is like a game crafter type of construction. Nothing too crazy. So if it's all that, you know, all the assets and everything are there, then they can just send it off to be made by whoever. Um, shouldn't be that big a deal. And you have axes and bows and shields, and those seem to be the suits. And how you apply them seems to be how the game plays. So yeah, simple game. It's like uh, Viking Uno, maybe. Then we have one of those games that is... Uh, Magical girl combat is what it's supposed to be. Ages 10 and up, two to four players, so there's going to be competition. Um, it's like Adventure Time meets Powerpuff Girls meets anime in the look of everything. And then in the people that you're against, uh, there's no real difference in the way that the characters are set up, other than there happens to be a black background on this graphic. So um, maybe you can play whoever you want jump back and forth uh yeah i mean i am obviously not the target market for this uh but if you have someone that you think wants to play this and doesn't want to play anime uh or pokemon or other uh, Yu -Gi -Oh, other anime games then maybe this will be more suited for them i don't necessarily see anything that other than just a bunch of pink so uh that's you know basically gender um nominating gender commanding whatever you want to say like you know forcing them into one group uh other than the barbie colors so if you want to play it with boys and girls you have a good time speaking of toys uh if you hear the chittering away in the background that's the laser engraver i got some uh zombicide stuff i've been printing the i, I on pla i'll print out some small uh discs and then on top of that i'll put it in the laser engraver and engrave labels onto all my stuff and that makes it so I can use more fonts and usually it's been doing a pretty good job but just on dark gray I haven't been getting too good of a reaction so 
I've been doing some tests and you're just gonna hear it in the background. It takes a little more laser time. So yeah. And then other than the pink, rifle rogues doesn't seem all that different. You're gonna have rivals and uh, there happens to be a woman on top. Uh, you have roles, you have some type of things that assign your abilities. And this time equipment and materials, liquids, metals, and magic go together to make some type of crafting system for your assassins. That's all cool. So maybe you're just running around looking for the materials to be able to make the best weapons. And then you punch it out at the end. Okay. That, that might sound pretty good. One of the things that D&D is missing that you can get in other games like this is crafting. So you get a, a little bit of different type of adventure that you wouldn't get otherwise with your regular thieves in other games. And then one of the bigger games here that has differentiated itself out on a, a later time a table than on a Tuesday, Wild Serengeti. The idea being you have animal meeples and some, uh, I don't know, Serengeti terrain. I made a cardboard that you play it out on. You can do Pride Rock. You can make your own little... Um, a Lion King adventure, <laughs> whatever you want to do. doesn't always have to be lions. There's a solo mode. There's all kinds of fun things possible here. And you get painted little meeples for your own safari. We have a safari park I've been meaning to go to in San Diego. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. So if you can't make it, like I haven't been able to make it, maybe you can you know, do it the meeple way and get wild Serengeti until you can eventually make your way out there and go see the drafts for yourself. Well, this is interesting and very much in line with, uh, I have uh, Escape from Dulce, Secret Unknown Stuff by Sentient Cow Games, where they have fun adventures between aliens and cows. And this is Don't Steal My Cow Man. And in Escape from Dulce, they have a two-headed cow that has a chain gun on their back. And then they have little gray aliens and stuff you defeat. Maybe that's what's going on here in a simplified format. Um, the graphics are very, very simple. Um, it's a quick game. It does not cost a lot of money. Uh, if you want to pay $28, I'm sure you're going to get something better looking than these prototypes. And uh, maybe even some printable make it yourself type of deals. Uh, it's saying... That there's a print and play version and that's what i'm looking for right here as far as the cost 28 dollars is the retail edition but they don't have the reward set up for print and play it's just give us ten dollars and that's it um if you're gonna talk about print and play then make it available uh, i think i think this is a good candidate for print and play because of the simplicity of the things so there be that uh but yeah, if you like the fun of these weird little alien type conspiracy type games, then this might be a good contender. Just something simple that you can play and have a fun time with. Then we have another contender for deck building, collectible deck building, which means they want you to spend a bajillion dollars. Um, I'm going to tell you, there is not enough information for that to happen. So um, you have a card. You have a title and the same graphic that's back here and nothing to prove at all why you should get any of that money. Um, okay, so it just finished off in the background so you can hear the squeak. It's going to start chipping away in a minute when I throw another one in. But yeah, that's more that I could say about this campaign um, because there's nothing. You, you, you guys know about that. Uh, you got to show the game what it's happening, what's going on with it. Maybe they just threw something out there to try to get some interest um, just to see what it was like to crowdfund. Um, but, yeah, it, let's see. Yeah, first created, zero backed. It, it's, you know, probably just a joke. Then we have Autumn Island, an unrelenting board game of survival horror. One to four players, that's pretty cool. So you get washed ashore, and then you have to somehow make your way through surviving in this world where I guess it's a forest or jungle. Um, I mean, it says beach, but it's got a palm tree, so is that jungle? I don't know. Wolf, chicken, and boar. 
Are you attacked by more chickens? We cannot be attacked by more chickens. The space chickens got me sick in the last couple of weeks from uh, excavation earth. I mean, I just, I don't know that I can handle another two weeks of being ill. Then we got some plastic ponds and things like that to make it simple. So it looks pretty neat. Um, I like the idea. You just have to take a look and see if the implementation is going to work for you. Um, it's hard to say because the, you have a lot of expectations about twists and turns and the writing and all that. So it's hard to say, oh, I should put my money in a particular like survival horror idea. You got games like, um, what was it, Starve Together? Is that the one? Uh, you know, that uh, take a lot of the, um, the survival aspects of that genre and uh, kick it up quite a bit. But then you turn it into like a mathematical problem and then you do the same thing every time. So uh, maybe they, they make it a little extra. Um, art looks okay, uh, but it is very much a prototype. It's hard to make too much of a judgment. But uh, I think I would survive okay uh, as a, a shipwreck survivor just because I got a lot of extra reserves so long as I can find water. I think it could last for a while. What do you guys think? you think you can make it? Where would your ideal shipwreck be? My ideal shipwreck would be Catalina. And then we have one that comes out of left field as far as social deduction being mixed with fantasy and it being about dragon riders. These are not things that you would think would mix. Uh, definitely nobody else has thought of it. I mean, you could take the social deduction formula and pop it into any context. Um, this one where the cards kind of mix and match together, that part is pretty neat. So um, it looks like I think you can take any left side card and mix it with any writer card on the right side. And somehow that will work. Um... Yeah, it's just a lot of stuff thrown together. That's crazy. Social deduction is like battleship, but with plural playing, right? You're, you're always just kind of like taking guesses and throwing it out there and, until you can winnow it down into a, a couple of selections and maybe you'll get a few hits. It should work with dragons. And then sometimes I have a hard time understanding where to put these ones because they are almost like a role-playing game but they're a game book so exalted funeral has come up with lots of different horror driven pieces of content before um not all of them have been game books necessarily uh but they've been for rpg content and other things as well um artwork has always been pretty uh pretty high in the quality it's just a matter if it's your style then uh, this exquisite corpse in Maggot's Keep is going to also fit that style. So, um, yeah, not a lot of pictures. There's a few, uh, but you can get kind of an idea of what's going on. You get some, I don't know if those are going to be flail snails, flail snails or other types of uh, underdark critters. Um, but it does look like you got some burrows to deal with and uh, a lot of different ideas on things you could play uh, i know a lot of people have enjoyed the solo rpg experience and maybe they'll give this one a shot if they want more of that that uh, extra darkness and sometimes folks are up for abstract strategy that's where motif the board game comes in two players uh very simple components little pieces of wood of different colors and as you move them around turn them hop them uh, you get various win conditions and go from there. It's like trying to explain some checkers to somebody in 30 seconds. It's the same kind of deal. <laughs> here's a board, here's some pieces, here's how they work. You can check it out on Tabletopia if you want to play it uh, uh, right now and give it a shot and see if other folks might like it. There's this uh, triangular spinning thing that can be done to fit these different pieces together. So that part can be kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, just depends. I would not want to lose any of these pieces, especially if they're going to be interlocking like that. Uh, but it is a different uh, way to play through it. So maybe you're trying to develop the least number of steps to make these shapes. Or maybe you have a certain shape and then your opponent has a certain shape. And you're trying to figure out how to make it happen on the board. So, thoughts. Then we have a roguelike entrant into Skirmish Battle. This is 
Neverheim, and I believe that this has appeared recently. Zombie Division. Uh, I'm not sure where they're out of Australia, but something very similarly named has appeared not too long ago. And I don't know if it's just from a different company or, or how it works, but... Oh, you know what? I think maybe this came up and then maybe canceled. Maybe that's how it worked. But um, I, I know I've seen very similar figures like this before. So if you're into this Neverheim world, um, this is the core boxes and starter sets and all that kind of fun stuff. And maybe you'll check them out. Maybe it was on GameFound? And then popped over here. Yeah, I've, everything about this looks really, really familiar. Uh, the art style especially. Um, and maybe it was a different faction in Neverheim. Hmm. It's hard to say. But if you're into skirmish games and you want something with this interesting uh, cartoon uh, art style aspect, and give it a shot. Uh, I think maybe these are based on various mythological creatures i'm getting severe deja vu looking at this so you guys tell me what i'm missing out and why it looks so familiar then this looks like fun to me but i don't know how many people also get those word of the day calendars or read through dictionaries from different uh centuries and time periods of slang to see how people would compare the whores of your twitter handle uh is a fun place for a lot of those Word or who word to who is this card guessing game that would be fitting for somebody like myself? So, um, slang phrases and other weird things. Um, I don't know if you have to search them down or you say them and then somebody um, that gives you the 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 name. And here's the thing where I would like lose my mind. Salty. I don't know, it was like eight, nine years ago, something like that, seven, eight years ago, everybody was saying salty, and I'm like, why is everyone talking about piracy? Nobody is getting on a ship in the Carolinas. What are you talking about? And they're like, oh, it's this other thing. I was like, it can't be this other thing, because it was already a thing to begin with. It was about pirates and sailors. It has nothing to do with whatever stupid rap album you decided to listen to today. And uh, somehow I was in the wrong. And, you know, three centuries of, of the English language backing me up on this apparently was not enough. So I would have a little bit of a problem if they're using really new stuff. And I'm sure really new people, if they're using, like, the stuff that people like me that are uh, literate have been using, um, could have a different issue. But otherwise, it might be fun. You know, you learn some stuff. That's what's fun. The, the best type of games if you learn a little something here and there while you're doing it. And then we have the return of Yedharo models uh, out of Spain. These guys make really nice models. They have a Patreon that they used to use uh, to sell these sets. And now they exclusively just do things on Kickstarter. I guess the model, uh, the payment model just works better for them. And they got some demonic looking fellas here and there uh, in this collection and you can see they're all pre-supported they work best for resin printers but resin printers now are cheaper than anything else so if you wanted to pick it up you can as you can see 120 euros commercial license if you wanted to sell them I think they have that type of license for all of the previous campaigns also so uh, if there was a game this would work really well for uh, Tabletop Minions, Uncle Adam's Reign in Hell, which is their new skirmish game that's models agnostic, so these would work really well um, because they're demons and they'd all look great in uh, Descent to Avernus or even in uh, Massive Darkness 2. They have some, uh, some demonic uh, expansions and things like that that would look pretty cool. So you want your own Cerberus, uh, three-headed dog type thing. That's pretty neat. You got a, a cranky... Uh, some type of fire giant demon gorilla majig um so there's all these kinds of cool things they want to call them a knight i'm not going to argue uh even uh, with resin uh the the resin um fluids have been much better recently so even trying to hold up these uh larger skull businesses uh 
on these chains uh, shouldn't be too ba big a deal uh, obviously you wouldn't want to handle them too much but uh, that part doesn't look too bad so yeah neat looking um, you know there's always the sponsors from the channel from previous episodes uh, crippled God we haven't seen them in quite a while but uh, they make the same kind of deal and uh, the other folks that uh, use my mini factory so all kinds of good things are still out there I've uh, found that you can go on their patreons and still follow them if you like any of these guys and when you're ready to purchase then you can just purchase the, the patreons for that month from there uh, and then go back to following them if you don't have the money to do it month after month but you do want to keep in contact and see what type of cool stuff they've got then you can always do that and welcome back to the very prolific uh, Meanders group. These are their Gothic City Maps Part 1. So if you have a, I don't know, Vampire, Starfinder, um, some type of modern city RPG, or even if you're just looking for some maps to play on your, your skirmish games and all that kind of stuff, you can get these uh, fairly inexpensive map packs. Uh, they've got a ton of them, but because of them wanting to prevent people from stealing their little images, uh, they don't make it easy for you to see everything that's going on, which makes it harder to make points to say, hey, this is good, you should buy, because <laughs> you can't see it. But uh, if you want to go in there and maybe expand the images out, it'll, uh, it'll make it a little easier for you to see, especially if you've been needing these types of maps for your own adventures. And we have another very prolific individual. This is Diego Pisa Artworks, my bride, my dear bride, fifth edition version. And uh, normally Diego Pisa makes um, agnostic systems or agnostic pieces of uh, of work. And this time they're just saying that it's for 5e because it's a full adventure, and you got to include more details and things like that. They always have pretty good art. They have a um, large amount of characters that they've already created uh, that you could utilize if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, everything's fully created. Usually you can use them in Pathfinder as well. Uh, they come with the tokens and things for you to use in VTTs. And they are never that expensive. So if you want to check out what he's got um, in this campaign, you can also check out in previous ones and maybe pick those up as well. Uh, lots of different options always and uh, here you can even see some of the ones that they've come out with prolific individual I'm sure there's gonna be many more in the future um, but if you want to give it a shot try it see what uh, type of cool adventures they make in addition to the cool creatures and artwork so we already looked at one adventure book and that's kind of how the GM -less, uh role-playing games work this one is for supernatural horror protocol squared eons a lot of words um, but it looks pretty neat. Uh, the idea that you don't have to use a GM, you let the system create the, the, the stuff that's supposed to be going on and, and lock the mysteries and, uh, you get a couple options, I guess, and whether or not you defeat a thing, it's probably pretty combat heavy, uh, since that is easy. Um, if you defeat it, you don't defeat it, <laughs> like whatever the the requirements are you defeat it move to the next page um but uh you know the i'm sure they can offer you some other cool things to go along with it if it's going to be horror related that means that there is some type of monster and you know if you're going to be running away from it then that part can be fun so you got gm free options all or all of them are uh horror based i think this week but uh Halloween's rolling around the corner. Maybe you want something spooky. Not too spooky, but uh, definitely part of a growing line of metal miniature figures are the Halfling Domestic Infantry. I like the idea here. They're tiny, right? So the armor is not going to fit them all that well. And the why do you have a Reaper with a scythe? Because that's what farmers had. Uh, most of the implements that you would see that people would use the spears and the um, even axes 
uh, lots of the different things in combat that you'd find, not maybe necessarily a sword, but a knife for sure, is the stuff you had around that you would use, your uh, domestic or your agricultural um, equipment, and it just would make a lot of sense for you to take it with you since people were not all that rich. You weren't a knight necessarily being able to afford all this uh, metal and whatnot. So if your armor was made out of a pot, it was because that was the only metal you had to protect yourself with. And metal don't know where it is. It don't know where it's going. It just knows to either flex, defend, you know, or, or do whatever it has to do. So you got all these folks out here doing their best with the little tiny bits of equipment they've got. And uh, why not? You know, you're you're facing off against the big bad and it's the only thing you had to prepare yourself with. It makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of humor with that. So if you like these halflings, it makes sense to you. Makes sense to me. Maybe pick them up and take a look at the rest of the halfling stuff that they've been going. They've produced a lot of halflings, kobolds, goblins, all kinds of cool stuff from Midlam. Then we have the return of Natalie Upon and her 3D maps. This time it's inns and taverns for fantasy. You get, uh, let's see if we can roll down here. See how they work out pretty well? I'm pretty sure what she does is she 3D renders out the... Uh, the whole environment, and then uh, just makes a 2D version of it. They always have, um, like as you can see, the shadows and everything attached to them. Uh, tokens, portraits, all that kind of fun stuff to add to it. This time she's actually putting in character sheets, background story, all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of times what she does is she just gives these art packs that uh, give you all these different options to throw on with them. So... Uh, yeah, just a little bit of different offering. Uh, I don't know who she's partnered with for it. Um, but she always does a really amazing job with these pieces. And, um, I think you can put them into whatever VTT that you need to print them out, whatever you need, 175 plus props. You should be able to fill it out and do whatever you, you need to do for the tavern or inn that you're creating. Then we have a set of miniatures. This time you can use in Deadlands or something else. These ones are Wild West miniatures. The same size as what you'd get in uh, Zombicide. So if you didn't get Zombicide Undead or Alive and you wanted to use some different types of survivors and that kind of stuff, uh, you could use that here or, I mean, Deadlands, whatever you want to run them in. Um, I don't think that these guys are necessarily named after anyone specific i don't recognize these individuals um but if you need some metal minis then they got you covered uh pretty good detail on them uh but like i said i don't think they're specifically like a wild bill hickok or billy the kid or anything so they're fairly generic you can use them however you want and uh, maybe yeah yeah none of them look they look like everybody back then that would have the long hair and the beards just because they don't have clippers back then. Makes sense, right? Then if you want to get yourself ready for what is looking like an Underdark adventure coming up soon, Hopeless Cavern that we have. Myconids, elves that could easily be drow, some orc barbarians, cursed people, goblins, gnomes that could be for Niflibliblin, however you pronounce them. So you got cave gnomes, same thing. Kobolds, they like setting traps and things underground. Demons that you might find. There's the drow, golems, and then just weird shit. So all kinds of weird things. Sporlings, myconids, this crazy cliffside of fungus <laughs> that is the giant that's going to be coming out and attack. And I wonder how giant because kobolds and everything are not they're only half the size of a humanoid um a regular sized humanoid so i wonder how the giant uh, goes in uh relation to them uh abolith that looks pretty cool it's like a goldfish from hell um yeah oozes as you can find just about everywhere the great old one himself probably a little tiny I hope it is bigger than the cultist, <laughs> at the very least. Uh, mimics that uh, fit into that kind of world. 
lots of cool things. So if you are running through the Underdark, you're planning too soon, then 3D printable STLs, $15 for the whole thing. So not a bad bad uh, run. For extra five bucks, you can get them pre-supported. Probably go for the pre-supported version, save yourself the time. But, you know, it's your printer, you do whatever you want. But they look pretty cool. Look like they'd be fun to, uh, to paint up. And normally we get these beer coasters and things from uh, Lovecraft stuff. This time it's from D&D. So if you like all uh, owl bears, you like kobolds, you can check it out. I'm not sure if it's licensed because owl bear is a D&D Hasbro product. So I'm not sure if they can even call it owl bear. But if it's inspired, a piece of artwork, maybe it's not that big a deal. Um, but I'm always on the lookout. I was like, guys, have you thought about the talking to your lawyer <laughs> on these? Check it out if you if you need some coasters though. And then we have a continuation of Bones and Portals, which was a campaign from last year. So uh, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see. Um, you can put this as uh, with the base or without the base. You can put it down as a reward. You can try to scale it different ways. Um, the centipede one looks pretty cool. The centipede going around the back. The cobra. This looks like if you're going to run a big trouble in Little China and low pen, he's got his thing in the background. Or you're going to do cobra la, then that would be pretty awesome in the background. Pretty standard gem altar. You can use just about anywhere. Same kind of thing with crystals and volcanoes. Um, different types of skulls. Skulls are always fun. So, yeah. And like I said, with and without the base. Uh, you can check it out either way and uh, put them anywhere you want. You can use it as a helmet without the base if you wanted to. And then finally for, it says 1E and 5E, but I'm sure you can do it for stuff in between, uh, the complete uh, folio black label. What does all that mean? <laughs> this is um, like a magazine, I think, that had a bunch of uh, pieces that were thrown in it together. And it uses this uh, Frazetta style artwork, which I've always been impressed by. Um, 60, <laughs> there's been 59 other uh, creations. So obviously the art's impressive. You might get it just for that. Um, I'd like to see uh, a book of just the art uh, collected because there's so many nice pieces and you won't have to buy 60 uh, zines in order to pick it up. But um, you get different adventures other things the types of stuff you would normally expect to find in any other zine maps um npcs all that kind of great uh beautifulness and you can probably pick up the other ones as well if you uh, are interested in what uh scott taylor here has created you can pick it all up for 10 bucks you can get in a hardcover for 40. so you got options and they aren't too bad and uh yeah like i said the artwork is stunning and that's it for me i was going to try and figure out how to uh put some uh of the minis that i painted since the last time i highlighted any of those in this new format but i don't think today is going to be the day for that uh i think what is going to happen is i'm gonna go crawl under a blanket get some sleep take a little nap while this renders out and uh, probably do the same thing all weekend, try to recover. Hope none of you guys catch what I had. Uh, I tested negative, so there is something other than COVID that can knock you out for two weeks. So even if you don't believe and you complain about this, that, the other thing, whatever precautions you take for one, hopefully keeps you safe from the other and uh, nobody gets sick. Everyone in my family has gotten this deal already. So yeah, looks like there's another one. If I'm patient zero, sorry. Otherwise, you guys have a good one, and hopefully I'll be better by Tuesday.